loving relationship that saved lives and fought for equality. The achievements of Flora Murray and Louisa Anderson, today remembered by the Devil's Porridge Museum near Gretna, a place that also marks the region's efforts creating munitions in the First World War. So we've done this research um, because LGBT History Month is really, really important. It's important to recover those lost kind of historical icons that maybe haven't got as much attention in the past. Flora Murray was born in Dalton, near Dumfries, in 1869. After deciding on a career in medicine, she became a medical assistant at the Crichton Asylum in Dumfries, a low-paid, low-status job. But that didn't stop her studying to become a qualified doctor. And at the outbreak of war in 1914, alongside her partner, she travelled to Paris, setting up a hospital to treat injured soldiers. Before this, women doctors had traditionally kind of looked after women and children, and World War One, because there was such a shortage of male doctors, they had to A, look after men for the first time, but also deal with injuries that had never ever been seen before. The pair's work was so successful, the British government, who had previously turned away female doctors, asked them to start a hospital in London. They went on to treat thousands of British soldiers returning from Europe. The couple were also giants of women's suffrage, fighting for the right to vote. And Flora used her medical background to help the movement. She looked after key figures like Emmeline Pankhurst and other suffragettes who had been force-fed and who were weak from hunger striking in prison. Um, so much so that she was actually put under surveillance by Scotland Yard at one point because they thought that she was helping them escape recapture from the police. Dr. Flora Murray returned here to East Riggs in 1918 in order to speak to the women of the munitions factory. She wanted to encourage them to use their right to vote for the very first time. But as this poster from the year points out, she was also supporting a certain candidate, her brother, Major William Murray, who went on to win the election. What do we know about their relationship and what would it have been like for them at that time? Her and Louisa Garrett Anderson lived together from 1914 onwards. They had two terrier dogs. They uh, share a grave in Buckinghamshire. Um, and it was clearly, they wrote very kind of um, loving letters to each other and referred to each other very lovingly. I think within suffrage circles, um, it was acceptable for uh, unmarried women who had formed close bonds to live together. So how is she remembered? So I think she's remembered for her World War I service, but she's also remembered in terms of her feminist activism, but also in the fact that she was in a loving, committed relationship um, that lasted until her death. I mean, that the, the grave where in which both women are buried um, is engraved with the words, we have been gloriously happy. And I just think that that's just a lovely sort of um, end to their relationship.